Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last episode, we defeated the Highland Ravager, and we defeated her rather handily too. That dragon has always given me a lot of issues, yet we were able to take her down like nobody's business in the last episode. Now, we are pretty much finished for the Umpriest de Leon. I mean, yeah, there are these kind of large areas of the map that we haven't explored. However, we've gotten all the regions, we've gotten all the landmarks, and I'm pretty sure we have gotten all of the quests, so it's it's pretty much just open space. And because of that, I'm, I'm quite content to move on to a new map. However, before we do go, in the last episode, I was talking about there being a codex entry in this ring. I've remembered where it is. Because I know exactly where I'm going, I'm just gonna go pick up this codex entry. I'm, I'm certain that I have missed plenty of codex entries on other maps, but I, I knew there was one here. I knew there was one here, so it was gonna annoy me if I didn't go back for it. Yeah, right there. Daily observations. Day one. I had to climb up the side of the canyon. Judicale's crossing has been destroyed. Such a pity. It was an impressive construction. I've settled in a nice, sheltered archway. No dragons by this ring yet, but I suspect they'll be along. Day two. Nothing happened. I heard roaring from one of the other rings, but decided to stay put. Best not make myself known to the creatures just yet. Day three. Finally, one of the dragons flew in this morning. The flapping of its great wings as it landed knocked me off my stool. It was remarkable. After settling down, it took a soak in the pool. They must enjoy the heat. Day four. I got up the courage to sneak around the area, spied several clutches of eggs. If dragons enjoy the heat, perhaps unhatched eggs do as well. Day five. Several smaller dragons are now resting in the pool. Adolescents. It's quite windy. I keep losing notes to the breeze. I wonder if the writing ends here because presumably the notes have all blown away. Given that there's no corpse around here, I would assume that the writer, you know, got away safely or... Or maybe he was just eaten elsewhere. Now then, back to Skyhold. Everyone should be returned from their war table missions. Also, whilst I remember the garden, I have all the Felandaris I need, but I need more Vandal Aria. Yeah, with that in mind, we can we can replant the Felandaris. It isn't necessary anymore. Hello there, and uh, you, you inadvertently got turned into Felandaris. And then, no, 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 no. Let me just make sure, yeah, you are on Vandalaria, okay. I'm not trying to replant anything over here. Excuse me, up and over. Yeah, I believe we actually only ended up needing, like, six Felandaris. No, 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 that's not what I... God damn. The... Excuse me, I want to... I want to loot, please. Thank you. God, these... These plants can be so tricksy at times. Yeah, let's get these replanted. Yoram Vandal Aria. And... Some Vandal Aria over here. Good stuff. Uh, what's going on over here? He's clever, I think. A special note is in order. If you say so. Something troubling you? Oh, I would never say anything like that. See that you don't. Elan, this woman doesn't care about your troubles. This woman doesn't care about the fact that you're lovesick. All she wants to do is deliver her messages on time. The fact that your bow is clever is irrelevant to her, my dear. 
actually, you know what, I'm just going to check. The vault hasn't opened up yet, has it? I need that third one. Yeah, and are you still in there? I don't... Yes, you are. God damn. You're supposed to spawn into other areas. Why won't you? Why won't you do that, sir? Hello, Josephine. Ooh, any gossip? Please tell Lord Dorian that I can't get him an invitation to the Winter Sun Ball in Leeds. He won't be surprised. He said it would probably be beyond you. It's not beyond me, it's... <sighs> Tell him I'll try. Oh, Josephine, you're playing into what he wants for Klein and Sinker. Oh, so why can't Dorian go to that ball? Why can't he? Let the boy go to the ball. What have we got? Finding Samson's weakness. Dagna has forwarded what she learned about Samson's strange armour. Her glee over her discovery is disconcerting, but her information may prove invaluable. We should speak at your earliest inconvenience. Uh, at your earliest convenience, Inquisitor, excuse me. Colin, he's not being rude, he just wants to meet up. Whoops. And we have some money. Thank you. Now then, I'm gonna figure out where I'm sending everyone. Be right back. Okie doke, and I am back. First things first, learn more about dragons. The dragon that Corypheus controls looks like an archdemon, but is something else entirely. To defeat his threat, the Inquisition must know all it can about dragons. Frederick of Sorol, the self-styled researcher of dragons, may be of some help. However, no one knows when Corypheus may attack next. Frederic and the Inquisition should focus on one area of research first. Josephine says, No one knows more about the beast than the Pentagast family of Navarra. With Cassandra's help, I could secure permission for Frederic to peruse, the, to peruse their archives for information about dragons past and present. Liliana says, One can learn quite a bit by dissection, and many minds are better than one. My agents can search all of Thedas for naturalists like Frederick to join him in pouring over dragon carcasses to their heart's content. And Cullen says, didn't you recently discover a dragon nesting ground? Frederick might be able to learn something from it. Get him to lead a research expedition. I can supply an entourage of soldiers to protect them. So Cullen and Josephine both have interesting ideas, however... To be blunt, I feel like learning about dragons from the past and learning about dragonlings isn't necessarily going to be all that helpful. However, we have killed a crap ton of dragons. And if we just have the carcasses lying around, we might as well put them to good use. Let's see what we have. Indeed. And next up, a golden opportunity. Inquisitor. My, how things have changed. When we first arrived at Skyhold, we would have been lucky to have the elite of Halam Sharel even acknowledge our presence. Now that we've occupied Suladin Keep and can no longer be ignored, a group of merchants and noblemen have approached me with a proposal. They say that, since the Inquisition is currently better placed to keep order in the Dales than even the Imperial Throne, they would like to set up a consortium of sorts. An Inquisition ambassador at their side will, according to them, aid communication and allow us to keep their interests safe, even as they promote ours. It's worth considering, Your Worship, Josephine, and she's the only one taking part. Allow me to send the ambassadors, and I shall begin the arrangements for this consortium. At your service. Good stuff. And Cullen, you know what I'm about to say. You know it, I know it. Make me some money. To work? Indeed. Good stuff. Now then, I did say I was going to focus on Samson for a wee while. Let's see, how's my... My inventory's only at six. Do I have any... Okay, we should go hand that in to Halissima. And after that, we are going to go straight to Colin. I want to, I want to get Samson sorted. He's causing too much bother. 
with that armor. I want to figure that out first and foremost. Hello there. Now then, Hillisima, I have a couple of Dragonling scales for you. Bap. There we go. Come on, put over. Uh, are you going to speak? Going to take that as a no? Whee! Hey. Hello, Solus. Hey, damage bonus against beasts. Love it. And Cullen, I am here at my earliest inconvenience, apparently. No red lyrium, no allies, and soon Samson will have no armor, I hope. You hope? Dagna started work on her red lyrium samples, but she needs more details on the armor. We found orders in the mine. They mentioned Maddox, a name I did not expect to hear. Hmm. Yeah, they also mention a vessel. Samson's letter said something about taking over as the vessel. Perhaps it's a rank among the Red Templars. It could be a title from ancient to winter. Or it's some other role Corypheus has planned for Samson, and Maddox is part of it. Hmm. Who is this Maddox? Another voice from your past. In a way, this is complicated. Maddox was a mage in Kirkwall's circle. Samson smuggled letters between him and his sweetheart. Eventually, Samson was caught. That's why he was cast out of the order. Maddox was made tranquil and became a skilled craftsman of magical items. Samson must have rescued him. Hmm. Yeah, that is... Yeah, he was made tranquil for wanting to send letters to his sweetheart. I think Aino would be thinking that is extremely harsh. I can't believe they made a man tranquil over a few love letters. The official charge was corrupting the moral integrity of a Templar. Knight Commander Meredith wielded the brand for far lesser offences, believe me. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. Why would Maddox need saving? When the mages rebelled in Kirkwall, the worst battles took place at the gallows in the circle itself. And I thought Maddox had died in the fighting, or was eking out a living on the streets. A hard fate for a tranquil in Kirkwall. Samson must have found him taking him in hmm. I mean that is oh how I was gonna say how naive is I know I don't think she she likes to see the good in people but I don't think she's I I don't think she's that way inclined to the point of naivety he did say that Maddox is a skilled crafter this armor requires maintenance. Admittedly, at the time, assuming that Samson rescued him right as the fighting began, then Samson wouldn't have known he'd need Maddox for the armor. Ooh. It all depends on when he rescued him. If he rescued him straight away, then that was Samson just doing a, a good deed. If he rescued him afterwards, then clearly he had ulterior motive. It's an odd one. Ironor doesn't know Samson personally, and she hasn't had any direct contact with him, so she can't say what she thinks about him. And the letters she's found that he's written have been a very mixed bag, because on one hand, they are like, oh yeah, we need to get people to turn them into Lyrium Gardens. But on the other, we've found letters that are like, hey... I understand that our people are in pain. Make sure to give them as much elf fruit as they can. I don't want them dying in pain. Uh, treat Maddox as you would treat me. If you treat him like he's, he's a piece of shit because he's tranquil, I will come down on you because how dare you treat my man like that. Like, it's been a very mixed bag. We've seen examples of cruelty, but we've also seen examples of kindness from Samson. Ooh. I could go for either of these. Not this one. Absolutely not this one. Um... Oh, 
but here's here's my issue this could come out as really hopeful and really naive and this one could come out as really jokey I, I think we've seen more examples of Samson being an ass than being kind. Because ultimately he was still like, oh yeah, we need to grab people to turn them into Lyrium Gardens, which... Like, yeah, you care about your own people, that's nice, but you're also killing people in a very violent way. Having an inside man among Samson's forces would be invaluable if we could convince him. I couldn't say. I've lived around Tranquil most of my life and I've never understood them. It seems Maddox built Samson's armor for him and maintains it still. Tranquil and Kirkwall needed rare and expensive supplies for their enchantments. Supplies we can trace. I can have our men kick down some doors, Inquisitor. Samson's armor might lead us right to his stronghold. Oh, God damn. <laughs> Colin, no, you're making me money. <laughs> no, Colin, why? God damn it. I should have waited. Shit. Oh, oh, well, I guess we're not tracking down Samson today. I guess instead we'll go search for the, uh, the cradle of Sulavine. We're going to go find that elven blade then. Oh, well, at least I had a backup plan. At least I had a backup. That's nice. Okay, I believe. I believe it should be around the Unpriest um, Leon on the war table. There's something there. Yet yeah, rumors of the Sulavin blade. A pair of elves was found deceased in Empress de Leon, victims of the region's unnatural weather. Evidence found at their camp suggests they had discovered the resting place of the Sulavin blade, a sword from Dalish legend. The blade was lost during the Second Age, and besides being a valuable historical artifact, it's said to be a formidable weapon. The Inquisition's agents should be able to find uh, should be able to trace the elves' trail back to the blade's location. To see the sword recovered by one of their own and used in service of the Inquisition would no doubt inspire our Dalish allies. Secrets. Why did the elves fail to recover the sword themselves? I want more information on this legend. See to it, Liliana. Liliana. The Sulavine blade is said to be one of the finest weapons ever crafted. The tale of its loss is rarely shared, but we're all impacted by Corypheus's madness. If the sword may serve the Inquisition, then it serves us all. During the exalted march on the Dales, a band of elves used the sword to spill innocent blood. They hoped to power magic to use against their enemies. Instead, they were punished for their savagery. Spirits reached beyond the veil and struck them down. As for the blade, to this day it lies broken on cursed land. None may touch it without meeting the same fate as those elves. The sword is real, that I know. As for the tale, I cannot say. Stories told to frighten often involve a fair deal of embellishment. That doesn't mean something real did not inspire it. Neria, first to keep a Alindra of Clan Relafarin. Eh... This this is the clan with all of the knowledge, I swear down. Yeah, we want to venture forth. Now, who do we want to bring? Ooh, um... I kind of want to take Cassandra with me when we do the Samson quest. To be fair, I could bring multiple rogues or multiple mages. That is always an option, because I'm kind of feeling Cole and Solus. Hmm. You're not Blackwall, it's... I do like this party. No, 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 there you go. Hmm. 
Now then, let's see what waits for us here. Very pretty. Hello. So this is where the Sulevine blade was lost. Lost or misused. There is a reason it was never reclaimed. Hmm. Fair point. Now look, what am I dinging? Aha! Art oh, secret money! We are gonna have to pay very close attention here. Okay. Over here, perhaps? Aha! Uh -huh, right there. Again, thank you kindly. Money is always appreciated. Especially considering I spent most of mine... Uh... <laughs> buying uh, dragon bits to make armor from. A yoink. Thank you. Yeah, well, that looks very spooky. Let's just... Let's just leave that be for right now. Have an explore. Ooh, hello there. And what is this? Ver Tenadal, the way of three trees. Be swift and silent, the way of the arrow. Yeah, this... This would sound very familiar to Iron Ore. I don't like that. Um, but yeah, considering she was raised as a hunter, the, the Ver Tenadal. As the sapling bends, so must you. Ver Borisan, the way of the bow. Yeah, this is all stuff that she would have learned growing up. Receive the gifts of the hunt with mindfulness. Ver Adelen, the way of the wood. God, the... Th I don't know why, but that makes me feel so apprehensive. I don't know why, but seeing the Veer Tenadal just kind of written on the walls, it... I don't know how Ionor would feel, but for me, it, it gives me bad vibes. Bad... Bad vibes, that's not words. Bad vibes. I do apologise for all of the tongue fumbles today. I don't know why, but my tongue feels very, very slow today. What be that? What be that? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I'm gonna hope it's just spiders or something. Ooh, hello there. God, we got a way up here. Let's... Let's stick to the main cavern. For now. Again, what am I... Hmm. Oh, that's spiders. I heard that. I heard that scream. I know spiders when I hear them. Eight-legged freaks. Okay, and there goes that one. I don't know. I thought I saw a shadow moving across. I don't know why I'm so jumpy today. Maybe that's why I'm having so many tongue fumbles. It's because I'm, I'm preemptively freaking out. All right, then. Let's start from the beginning. What are we dealing with? Oh, God. We've already got dead people. That's nice. That's very nice. Be careful. There may be a reason this ground has lain undisturbed for so long. Requires veil fire. Okay, and right over there, wouldn't you know it? A yoink. Oh, God. And why are you at the end of a creepy hallway? Why? Sanctuary of the Dead. They always have weird names. Let's light everything. Let's light everything to make this place less spooky. Of course, everything does glow with an ominous green light, which doesn't exactly help how I feel, but... 
Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Hello. Hello. I should maybe mention I have sort of forgotten this quest. I know what we receive at the end of it, but... Smack him, there we go. Who else? Who else is here? Okay, is everyone chill? Is everyone good? Thank you for the glands. I'll appreciate them. It's only part of the sword. The elves broke it after all. They performed a ritual they did not understand. It appears they paid the consequences for it. That corpse was possessed by a pride demon. I doubt it was alone. There must be more altars. Yeah, there are. We can see them. Oh, uh, I think... I'm, I'm freaking out. I think I know, to be honest, I think she'd just be excited. Cautious. You know, this is, this is an old temple. Stuff clearly went on here. But I know... How do I put this? Aino doesn't mind leaving the past in the past. She does enjoy learning about, you know, the elven history and all of that and seeing if there's anything useful, but she's she's not exactly obsessed with, you know, reclaiming the past, reclaiming the empire. Why can't we build a new empire? Like, why can't we build something new and better? Okay. Come on, big boy. On me. Up. And a scream. And he's back. And the spinny spin. There we go. Way nice. And there's the pommel. Elf root. Do elves just call it root? No, we have another name for it. Well, that's no fun. You spend too much time with Sarah. <laughs> Excellent. I love that that's... Since the whole Blackwall reveal, that's their first banter about Elfruit. It... Beautiful. Ex excuse me, I want a light. Ah, <laughs> nice. And you can come with me. Thank you kindly. Oh, flipping it. There's a there's a fair amount back here. Flipping it. Who's leaving all of this gold just dicking around? Maybe the ancient elves offered like gifts of money. That would explain it. You know, we we offer this money unto the gods. May you know, pain and suffering rain down upon our enemies. Something like that. Excuse me, and let's... Again, let's like that. Aha! Excellent. Now that you know what, I only have around two minutes left on my timer, so I think I'm gonna end off right here. Uh, do we have any codex entries? That is a question. If this is just the dragonlings, yeah, we've we've gotten this because we've researched it. As is the pride demon, herlock, and the dragonlings. Yeah, places. The cradle of Sulavine, the Sulavine blade, a sword with purpose. When our people ruled the Dales, the Blade's purpose was to defend our borders. When the Chantry marched against us, its purpose was to protect the innocent from those who would oppress us. More than one great hand wielded it, wielded it in battle. Yet few know its name. Fewer still will speak of it. The exalted march stretched on, and the Chantry's forces were nearing victory. A band of elves could not bear the loss. Desperation drove them to take the Sulavine Blade. A wish for vengeance gave the sword a new purpose. If the Chantry thinks us monsters, they thought, then who are we to argue? They spilled innocent blood to power their magic. 
With it, they would defeat their enemies. Only the ritual failed. The elves stood in the darkness, blood on their fingers, bodies at their feet. Then they heard the sound of footsteps. The elves' wish for vengeance was granted to those they had slaughtered. Spirits reached beyond the veil and claimed the elves where they stood. As for the Sulavine blade, the sword lies broken in the accursed place where the elves attempted their ritual. Perhaps one day it will be reforged and given a new purpose. But at what cost? The location was lost long ago. Those who seek the sword never return. Some say they are claimed by the same spirits who were angered so long ago. As much as we long for our past, there are some memories better left buried. Story recited by Nerea, first to keep Alindra of Clan Relafarin to Mathis Laren, Inquisition Scribe. Very interesting. Yep, good stuff. Alrighty then, in the next episode, we try to find more pieces of the blade. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.